Welcome viewers and subscribers. Today is May 6, 2016. Normally I make a video and I pose a lot of questions. Today I think I have some answers. I'm going to give you a theory, and it's a big one. It answers a lot of the questions that we've posed so far. These are some of the questions we've come up with about the little white sun. What is it? Why does it always track the big yellow sun? And how come we can only see it around clouds? About cloaking? Well, who's got the technology to do it? And why is the hexagonal shape so important? We've seen a local solar object. What is it? And why does it appear so near? And about the regular sun, has it been replaced? Is there an artificial sun? And wasn't sunlight more yellow before? The theory I'm going to introduce today can answer all of those questions, I think, satisfactorily. Before I do that, let me get into my declarations. As always, there's no deceit, no falsehoods, no misinformation or disinformation. If I make a mistake, I correct it as quick as I can and in a video. And I have no ulterior motives. I do this to satisfy my own curiosity and as a service to humanity. I don't make any money, don't have any ads, don't sponsor products, don't peddle wares. I won't ever ask you for money. A reminder that this channel is driven by you, the viewership and the subscribers. You give me the ideas, determine what we're going to study, and I want to make sure if any of this is correct that you're recognized for the work that you put in and you have my gratitude for it. Thank you. I've made about a hundred videos now and in those hundred videos I cover a lot of ground so if you're a first-time viewer or if you've only seen some of the work I'd kindly ask for you to review some of the uh, the older videos because this is going to be a, a big conceptual leap for those who are new to this project. From about 11 o'clock last night until 5 o'clock this morning, I stayed up watching this footage that you're seeing now. I had maybe, I don't know, a half hour or hour of it, and I would play it at one-eighth the speed, one-half the speed. There was something that didn't sit right with me. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it looked even more unusual than some of the other stuff that I captured. Eventually I put some filters on it and saw that there was another layer of movement, another layer of what looked like thin, wispy clouds in front of uh, the set of clouds that you can see directly in front of the little white sun right now. The other notable difference was the way in which the light was shining from off of the big yellow sun and little white sun. You can see as this footage goes on, there are rays of light that look parallel to each other. And they don't really come out of a place where you see a source of light. This was unusual for me. And it really bugged me because I, I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, thanks to all of the participation from everyone, I started going through the questions that people were asking that uh, they wanted me to address. And there was one email that said, hey, uh, have you considered that maybe the little white sun is the regular sun? And I had played around with that idea for a little bit, but I paid it a little more attention and thought, okay, what are the, what are the possible ways that that could be the sun? we would have to account for its different coloration. We would have to account for uh, the kind of peculiar behavior that it has. Really, it was as if the little white sun was a poor facsimile of the big yellow sun. And that's when it hit me. It is a poor facsimile of the big yellow sun. Remember that video I did on the camouflage and cloaking, the two methods, right? One is to bend light and the other is to use the cephalopod method. 
where there are chromatophores on one side that sense the wavelength or that, that pick up the wavelength. And it's processed, well, in the cephalopod by the nervous system, but it could be done by a computer. Whatever that signal is, is broadcast to the other side so that it appears as if you're looking through whatever is camouflaging itself. I have also posted a few cloud ship videos, which I was hesitant to do at first because it seems really far-fetched. I spent an inordinate amount of time going through that footage, taking stills, sketching over it, drawing my perspective lines, trying to think of ways that it could be a natural phenomenon. I could come up with nothing. I'm still open to other suggestions, but as it stands, that it seems more likely to me than not that there is some kind of craft in the sky. Maybe I should mention first also that I had a very difficult time getting past the cognitive dissonance, understanding that what I was observing couldn't be accounted for with conventional knowledge. So if some of this seems difficult to believe, uh, trust me, I, I, I know the feeling. But if you would do me the favor of just going through this and trying to examine it from an objective perspective, I think it'll be worthwhile. With this idea that there are ships essentially camouflaged flying in the sky. I was able to answer all of the questions in a fairly simple, non-convoluted way. So let's go through those now together. What is the Little White Sun? Well, under the theory we're looking at now, the Little White Sun is the broadcast version of what the ship picks up from the sun shining on top of it. Why does it track the big yellow sun? Well, first we have to figure out what the big yellow sun is. And I think what it is is either the sun's light moving around the craft or possibly light that is sensed from the back of the ship and broadcast out through the front as well. The little white sun being the projected version of the actual sun uh, through the tiles or through the external part of the ship means that we really would only see it with the clouds. The clouds are used also by the ships to conceal their location. So the only time we would see it is when it is interposed between us and the big yellow sun, the regular sun. This just clicked for me. The, the local solar object had been fascinating and frustrating because it, it looks so obviously close to us. Here's some footage from a prior video. One, pay attention to the right-hand side cloud, the one from which the sun is leaving, and take a look at the light pattern on it as it leaves. It looks like, and I do believe, the sun is directly adjacent to it. I mean, this is some very peculiar lighting. We don't ever see this with the sun in space. It just wouldn't have that dramatic an effect. You can see also that the sun is shining directly onto some clouds that look like they're slightly above or behind it. Under the new theory, though, this is pretty easily explained. The ship acts as a relay for the sun so that the light from the sun essentially does reach us in the same manner it would. Only the relay location is right next to the clouds, wherever the ship is. The one thing it cannot avoid is the light effect on the clouds nearby. The light that shines out is incoherent, and so it can't be directed. It happens to shine on the clouds right next to it. The question's about cloaking. Who has the technology? We have the technology right now, our military does. And if it happened to be a non-human entity, I would assume if they could make it here, 
uh, it wouldn't be too hard to employ the same sort of technology. I won't go through all of the material that I covered in the cloaking videos. You can check those out independently. Uh, I, I would mention though that the hexagonal shape is important um, for both methods. Its unique shape is able to bend light in a way that can redirect it back into the direction that the light was originally going. The other unique property of the hexagon, and there are only two other shapes that have it, the triangle and the rectangle, is that it's a tessellating shape, meaning it can fill up perfectly a two-dimensional space and it can do so while bending in three dimensions. So you can essentially cover a sphere or a curved object by using only hexagons or triangles or rectangles. This is a brief clip showing some of the hexagon coverage on one of the suspected ships. The audio is from the original video as well. Uh, I did most of that in zoom in and here's D, the honeycomb. I'll flash it one more time there. So there are additional areas where there are hexagons and there's a close-up of D, the honeycomb again. The structures on top are interesting because they match up with other parallel lines in the uh, the craft overall on this thing there are hexagons in quite a few places and the first one is actually the antenna that's my alternative to a but there are three other locations at least uh, where you can see coverage with the hexagons there's b1 2 and 3 the answer to the first two questions has the sun been replaced and is there an artificial sun it's they're both uh, sort of yes and sort of no. The sun that we're seeing, the one most proximal to us, is not exactly the sun. It's a it's a representation of it. It's a it's a picture of the sun. So the sun hasn't been replaced in its position. It's just it's got something between it and us. So the thing that's between us. It's not natural, and in that way we could call it artificial. Now its true purpose, I think, given this most recent analysis, is more for camouflage than anything else. Why is it that we see a hexagonal sun then, and why doesn't it appear all the time? My current theory about that is that when there's too much light, or maybe too strong of a signal for the system, it sends instructions to the front panel for maximum brightness or something. And because it's in a hexagonal shape, that's when we see it the strongest. What about the instances where we've seen what look like multiple planetary bodies? In these instances, the best theory I have so far, and I'm open to hearing others, is that there are multiple ships, and each of them are camouflaged and showing what the sun looks like to their position. It is also possible that there's some kind of refraction or uh, splitting of light occurring before it gets to the ship or before it is sensed and thus it gets shown in multiple locations on the front side of it. The difference in color between the little white sun and the big yellow sun can be accounted for by two things, I think. First, sunlight has to go through the atmosphere, which tends to scatter certain wavelengths. The resulting light to us is yellower. Secondly, it could be a limitation of whatever technology is being used for the relay, the, the rebroadcasting of the sun, as I've been saying. And that's the working theory that I have so far. Just a reminder that theories are works in progress. This is a hypothesis. 
so let's improve on it and in the next coming videos what I'd like to do is maybe address the weaker portions of it if you like the video I'd be grateful for your thumbs up vote and for you to share it or subscribe to the channel take care guys have a good one